Hello, my name is Donkey Kong. And I'm really cool. I have these really cool keys. I have my kazoo. All the other gorillas are really jealous of me. Just keep on walking. Yikes. Hey, welcome to our scene on diabetic ketoacidosis, or DK for short. DK also stands for Donkey Kong, and that's why our scene over here is about Donkey Kong over here. Now you might have noticed that this Donkey Kong over here is not quite normal. He's psychotic, and we'll explain why. But first, we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms of diabetic ketoacidosis. We're going to talk about lab values, complications, and at the end, we'll have a word on treatment. So let's begin. So diabetic ketoacidosis is the complication most associated with diabetes type 1 and less frequently with diabetes type 2. And what happens is, normally insulin is responsible for getting glucose into the cells. It also prevents fat breakdown. In diabetes type 1, insulin cannot be made. And that's why we have these insects over here on the floor. Insulin is not made. And of course in diabetes type 2, insulin is not being responded to. But either way, Insulin is not doing its job of getting glucose into the cells, and this could lead to a condition known as diabetic ketoacidosis. What happens is, insulin is also responsible for preventing breakdown of fat. So if insulin is not doing its job, then there's going to be an uncontrolled amount of fat breakdown. Now the body wants to do this, of course, because if glucose can't get into the cells, then we want to break down fats. But the problem with breaking down fat is that there's going to be excessive amounts of ketones in the body. That's why this gorilla over here, King Kong, has these keys over here. These keys are going to remind us of the keto acids. In fact, that's why it's called diabetic ketoacidosis. These keto acids include acetone, acetoacetate, and beta-hydroxybutyrate. Okay, now let's talk about the findings seen in the patient. Well, you might have noticed, again, as we mentioned again, King Kong over here was a little bit psychotic. Psychosis and delirium is one of the findings seen in diabetic ketoacidosis. You might remember that he had his kazoo over here. The kazoo for the kuzmol respirations, in which there's rapid, deep breathing. He has a knife in his abdomen over here. Maybe in his psychosis he put this knife here. I'm not sure. But it helps us remember the abdominal pain seen in diabetic ketoacidosis, along with the nausea and vomiting. He dropped his water bottle over here, and he's dehydrated from it. This helps us remember the dehydration seen in diabetic ketoacidosis. And that happens because glucose in the blood ends up in the urine, and there's an osmotic diuresis in which so much water is lost in the urine. And one more thing over here, as he breathes, <sighs> we note the fruit coming out of his mouth. This reminds us of the fruity breath odor seen in diabetic ketoacidosis, and this is due to the exhaled acetone. Acetone has a fruity smell. Okay, now let's talk about the lab values seen in diabetic ketoacidosis. So this first guy over here, this bystander, is gonna remind us of the lab values of diabetic ketoacidosis. The first thing we note is his hat over here. His hat has an H on it, an H plus, for hydrogen ions. There's going to be an increased amount of hydrogen ions, of course, in diabetic ketoacidosis due to all the acids. We also note in his hat over here, there's actually this candy over here, which reminds us of the hyperglycemia. Because if insulin is not working, then there's going to be an excess of glucose in the blood, which is the definition of hyperglycemia. He's holding these keys, of course, because lab values will show an increase in the amount of ketones in the blood, as well as in the urine. In his other hand, he's holding this white cell. This white cell is going to remind us of the leukocytosis, the increased amount of white blood cells. But it's interesting because there are these bananas. In our videos, bananas represent potassium because the bananas are high in potassium. So what we see over here are the bananas outside of this cell. They're outside the cell. In diabetic ketoacidosis, at least initially, there's going to be a normal or increased serum potassium. And this is because as the keto acids enter the cell, Potassium leaves and ends up in the serum to replace the lost acid. Also, insulin is responsible for pulling potassium into the cell. So if there's no, going to be no insulin, that's another reason why there's going to be potassium outside of the cell. But anyway, what happens is, potassium ends up in the urine. And that's why this guy over here has potassium, this banana, in his urine. And this actually leads to a decreased total body potassium level. Now let's talk about complications of diabetic ketoacidosis. And that's represented by this guy over here. This guy over here has an interesting hat. Looks like a brain. And it's got water shooting out of it. This reminds us of the cerebral edema. We also see his microphone over here. I have no idea why he has a microphone, but it has mucus on it. 
mucus microphone for mucormycosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis can lead to a life-threatening mucormycosis. Take a look at his heart over here. It's shaking, which reminds us of the cardiac arrhythmias, and it explodes to remind us of the heart failure. Diabetic ketoacidosis can lead to arrhythmia and heart failure. Okay, we'll end off this video with a word on treatment. Treatment for diabetic ketoacidosis includes IV fluids because of the hydration, IV insulin because the body's not making insulin, potassium to replete the intracellular stores, plus or minus glucose to prevent hypoglycemia. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on diabetic ketoacidosis. Please subscribe to the channel and take care.